From the common Mercator chart to the unusual Lambert's conical conformal chart, there's many different types out there. But which ones are the most useful for us when we're flying a plane? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the seventh class in the GNAV series. Today we're going to be looking at the basics of chart design and also some common and uncommon types of chart that we use in aviation. So first of all, what is a chart compared to a map? A map is a visual representation of physical objects on the earth like forests, rivers, mountains, coastlines, etc. A chart displays a bit more information that's relevant to its specific use. So for an example, in aviation, we might see, you know, forests, rivers, mountains, as we do on a map. But we'll also see things such as airspace boundaries, airways, nav aids, and airports. One of the fundamental concepts of chart design is something known as projection. And charts are printed on paper or displayed on flat screens, such as an iPad. Basically, they're 2D displays, yet they represent a 3D object. The surface of the earth. This means that we have to project the 3D image onto the 2D display. The easiest way to think of this is as if you had a light in the middle of a globe that shines out and hits the land which is solid and the sea um, allows the light to pass through. This would mean that the projection that goes out onto our 2D display has the land as shadow and the sea would be light and you would just draw around the shadow and end up with your projection of whatever landmass you're looking at. This is my crude attempt drawing Australia. The projection is going to be slightly distorted from the true shape of the globe surface, basically because it's going from 3D to 2D. And so you can't get a completely accurate representation. So because all types of projection will be distorted in some way, we need to decide what elements we want to have in our chart in order to decide what kind of projection we want to use. These things are all related to general navigation problems. So we want our charts to display latitude and longitude, we want to be able to measure bearings and distances, we want to be able to identify high terrain, and for ease of use we want to show either show great circles or rum lines as perfectly straight lines, and the map slash chart has to be of an appropriate scale. So to be able to measure bearings correctly and angles, we must have the lines of latitude and longitude intersect each other at 90 degree angles. This is something known as a right angled graticule. The lines don't have to be straight, such as in this one, you can see that the latitude lines are curved lines, but every line that crosses the other one still has an angle of 90 degrees. In order to measure distances accurately, it is ideal to have a constant scale in all directions. If our east-west scale was different to our north-south scale, whenever we travel diagonally, it would be really confusing and we'd have to use a combination of both scales and it would throw off our angles as well. If both the scale and the angles are not distorted in our projection, then we would have a fully conformal chart, which is ideal for navigation, but unfortunately, there is no chart out there that actually achieves this across its whole size. There are, however, some that have a very low level of distortion of scale, for example, that would be seen as acceptable because it is about less than 1%, and you would just fly within the area where those errors are so small. There are a few different types of projection that we use in aviation. One of them is a cylindrical projection. It's best thought of as wrapping a piece of paper around a globe and then tracing the outline of the land onto the paper. The cylinder touches the globe all the way around in a great circle at a certain point. Usually it's the equator, but it can be angled differently. It could be angled off to the side like this or fully horizontal. And the great circle of contact is known as the great circle of tangency. The cylinder would then be opened up, you would unwrap that bit of paper and fold it out into a rectangle and this is the projection that you use for the chart. A common projection using a cylindrical um, surface is known as a mercator chart 
and the great circle of tangency will be on the equator. This has a few properties of the ideal chart, but also has a few uh, compromises made, and we're going to explore that a bit more in the next class. Another type of projection is one that's based off of a cone shape. The cone is placed over the globe like a hat almost, and the top of the cone is either above the North Pole or it can be below the South Pole as well. The point of contact with the, of the cone with the surface of the globe forms a small circle of tangency, which is also the same as a parallel of latitude. And depending on the steepness of the cone, you would change where this small circle of tangency is. If you have a much wider cone, you would end up with a small circle of tangency that is um, a lot further towards the poles. If we then cut a line straight up the cone and fold it out flat, we would end up with a fan-shaped projection, something that looks a bit like this. And we'd use that for our chart. A well-known projection that uses a conic projection is known as a Lambert's conical conformal chart. The simplest form of projection is the example I used right at the start where we project onto a flat surface. It is known technically as an azimuthal plane projection. Here, a flat surface is placed next to the globe, touching it at one single point, and the globe is projected down onto that flat surface. This is then used as the basis for the chart. These are often used in polar stereographic charts, which uses a point of contact, which is one of the poles. In terms of chart symbology, there's actually so many out there that it would be really impractical for me to go through every single thing one by one. So I'd recommend going to a website where you can look at a few charts, which is called skyvector.com. You can then type in your local airport or some airport, some place that you know quite well. Have a little look around the charts. Just familiarize yourself in general with what chart symbols mean. And you'll see things that start to make sense, like the yellow is uh, man-made buildings. You can see that there's um, runway symbols right in the middle. There's various compass roses for navigation beacons. You'll start to pick it up and just sort of generally look at charts in general and you will slowly build up a knowledge of what chart symbols are. So in summary then, if we want to have an ideal chart, we must display latitude and longitude, we must display accurate angles and distances, it must have a constant scale in all directions, it must be able to identify high terrain, show great circles or rum lines as straight lines, and also display appropriate information. Unfortunately, no projection will give us a completely ideal chart over its whole area, but we can prioritize different things depending on the type of projection we use. The projections can either be cylindrical and we have a great circle of tangency. If we have a conic projection, we will get a small circle of tangency, which is also a parallel of latitude. Or if we use an azimuthal plane projection, we would have a single point of tangency or just a single point of contact. So in order to reduce the um, amount of distortion, charts will have to have um, latitude and longitude lines that intersect each other at 90 degrees. And we also need to have a constant scale in all directions. Otherwise, the distances we measure won't equate to the angles that we measure and the whole picture will come distorted.